Let me quickly summarize what we have learned so far. We have discussed linear SVM for separable case. By separable case, I mean the data points, the two group of data points can be separated by some linear function in the, in the feature space X, but there could be multiple uh, or many, many such uh, linear functions. We're looking for the optimal linear function or the optimal uh, uh, decision boundary, a linear decision boundary by maximizing the margin um, of, of the two groups. That problem can be formulated as the following constraint optimization problem, where the constraints uh, require the two group of data points are, uh, are located on the correct side of the dash lines. But instead of solving this uh, constraint optimization, we, we are solving um, the so-called dual problem, where um, so the primal problem is, is, a, is an optimization in terms of the slope beta and the intercept beta zero. And the dual problem, and the arguments are lambda one through lambda n. They are the Lagrange multiplier um, for the original constraint, because we have um, a constraint for each of the sample. So we have an n um, multi, um, Lagrange multiplier. Um, interesting thing about the dual problem is a lot of this lambda is actually going to be zero because of the following complementarity condition. The complementarity condition is part of the KKT conditions, and it states that lambda i and the constraint and the constraint cannot be non-zero simultaneously. So that means if a point is inactive, meaning it's not on the dashed line, then the corresponding lambda i must be zero. So only the points on the dashed line and whose lambda i will be non-zero, and those points are called the support vectors. And the only small number of points are support vectors. Once we solve lambda i's through the, the dual problem, we can retrieve the um, slope beta and the beta zero for the primal problem by using the KKT conditions. In particular, you're going to find that beta, the slope, is equal to the following sum. But instead of uh, doing the sum over n samples, we actually only need to do this sum, sum over um, just the support vectors because for non-support vectors, their lambda i uh, is going to be zero anyway. Once we solve the slope beta, again, stick um, with, uh, let's stick to the support vectors. We can pick um, any one of them because they have to satisfy this equality and, and we know y, we know x, we know beta, then we can solve beta zero. And now sometimes for computation stability, people will solve multiple um, beta zero because we can obtain one beta zero based on uh, one support vector, each of the support vector. Uh, in theory, this should all be the same, but in, in practice, and they might be slightly different, then we can average them. And then how are we going to do prediction once we have learned and um, the, the, the decision boundary. So the decision boundary corresponds to this solid line. And once we get a new point, we just plug in that point into this um, expression, the estimated beta and beta, uh, beta hat and beta zero hat, and just look at its sign. And based on sign, we're going to um, uh, predict to be uh, predict that a um, new feature to be either plus one or minus one. So that means um, we're just going to evaluate and this basically is just beta times x star plus beta zero and we just look at sign and then based on the sign we're going to predict the y star to be either one or minus one.